Okay, so uh, welcome back everyone. So we are going to our afternoon section. We will still have the connector stack uh, sharing. We will have another four talented uh, speakers to share about their, their thoughts. And uh, we are very happy to have uh, Sumit, uh, who is uh, the Chief Technology Chief Technology Solution Officer from Solas, and he is working very closely with different CIO, CTO on the real-time event-driven technologies. He will be talking about the event-driven APIs today. So uh, I will pass the time to you, Sumit. Thank you. Thanks, Patrick, and welcome everybody to API Days Singapore, and uh, welcome to a little twist on APIs as event-driven APIs and. Uh, uh, I run the technology team at Solus globally and work with a lot of you uh, in, in your journeys of becoming real, to, uh, real time and event driven. So through the talk today, uh, I was actually going to explore uh, Schrodinger. So many of you, I believe, will have engineering backgrounds and would, would know, would relate to, would understand Schrodinger and his famous cat. But just like Schrodinger talked about the uh, the duality of everything of quantum physics and uh, reality is there a duality between events and APIs? Are they two competing technologies? Are they complementing patterns? Let's examine that in a little bit more detail. Let's do justice to uh, Schrodinger's cat as we go. Okay, so kicking off digital transformation uh, for real time responsive apps events are a pretty good pattern, right? So I'll introduce what we do, what Solus does uh, from an event streaming and event brokering perspective, but uh, events and moving events help you, uh, help you build better responsive real-time applications. And what's the real need for us to do this, right? So if you, if you look at businesses around us, businesses are transforming and they're transforming pretty dramatically especially after COVID, right? Even before COVID they were, but COVID has actually accelerated some of this digital transformation. So consider the example of HP, and again, all public information. HP's business model has changed from, or is changing from selling printers to selling printing as a service, right? So rather than uh, being a transaction, uh, transactional supplier of printers, it's a contractual business model where uh, they make more money if the printers are always running, right? So uh, a constant relationship with the customers. So imagine what does that do to the IT systems of a company like HP or any manufacturing company or any bank or any telco as their business uh, is changing, right? So your customer interaction has to be much more deeper. It has to be very digital, very real time. Your billing systems, your charging systems have to become real time. Uh, you have to make sure that the printers don't run dry. So your supply chains and uh, your track and trace applications also have to become real time. And we can keep on extending this, uh, uh, this pattern, but the entire enterprise, all integration uh, is evolving towards being real time and while api first is a great strategy and uh, should be the starting point let's say from an e-commerce application throughout the enterprise as we look at the east west traffic of all of these smaller microservices which are a part of this transformation interacting with each other having that done uh, in a in a real time manner via events and streaming events is a much better strategy uh, in other perspective from Gartner this time, and many people would have seen this chart, but uh, uh, it's common knowledge that the value of data depreciates exponentially as time, uh, time passes. So the fresher the data, the most valuable it is. And again, numerous examples, not delving into that detail. So if we agree that real-time data is valuable to unlock the value of your data, Let's set that data in motion. Let's start streaming that data as event streams. And I'll give you the how as we go, right? Again, if, uh, if the printer is running dry, you need to act on that event immediately. If uh, a payment is going through um, any fraud detection or risk or any uh, cross elapsal functionality, better to do it sooner than later to derive maximum value. From an 
integration evolution perspective again giving you another perspective uh, this time from a bank so from the 2000s late 90s early 2000s uh, messaging became a pretty common mechanism of integrating producing and consuming applications right which then evolved to uh, esbs and service oriented architecture and then uh, at the last part of uh, this apis right uh, in uh, in the past few years apis and rest as being uh, lightweight uh, interaction mechanisms between publishers and subscribers producing the consumers and now because of this more and more real time nature polling or request reply is not good enough right you need to do things in parallel and hence the need of an event driven architecture you know apis evolving into event driven with taxonomies and uh, we'll we'll go into more detail right so if you look at those trends for real time responsive uh, systems for better customer experience events and uh, apis seem to be having a duality that north south traffic is best served with apis and east west traffic microservices interactions which often happens to be parallel uh, is best served with events right so let's look at it in a little bit more detail so if you take the example of a simple order management process uh, you could be ordering let's say uh, ice cream from 711 or uh, could be could be ordering anything right so from a retail store it could be an e-commerce website as well a typical order management process will have these steps and in modern times you would be building these steps as probably microservices or cloud native function as a service or uh, pick your favorite technology some of them could even be legacy interfaces now you could have all of these interact with each other in line as apis so this uh, this microservice calls rest uh, into the next microservice which does its business logic another rest call into the next microservice and things end up getting a bit coupled and service mesh comes in or talk about that as a as a sidecar mechanism to decouple them but uh, that's a typical api way but if you think about it slightly differently each of these microservices is doing some business logic it's consuming an event right a new order was received that's an event i do something with it validate the order i publish the event call the order is validated and this is all done over topics or it could even be done over restful uh, urls so each of these components is producing and consuming events right and all of them are in line uh, as it so seems so your uh, consuming application has to wait for all of these steps to happen before it can get a response that okay it's okay to deliver the ice cream to sumit right and then over time you'll add more components so you'll have cross sell upsell microservices a data lake ingester insights you want to know uh, what ice creams are selling better than the others but these systems are only consuming events right they are not producing anything and they don't have to be in line so if you have to architect this system so that it's very responsive it gives good customer experience let's think of it in an event driven way where there are two paths here there is the synchronous path where all of these microservices which are in line are going to be called before you can send a reply back to your publisher while anything that is in black they can be uh, offline they can be parallel they can be using patterns such as eventual consistency and deferred execution that if your order processor kicked off a second later it doesn't matter don't hold up your invoking api as a blocking call for all of these things to happen so that's why interaction between or among these microservices which can be parallel which can be asynchronous which can use patterns such as eventual consistency and deferred execution is best handled by events while your invocation is best handled by apis because there's somebody here who's waiting for a reply right so north south traffic versus east west traffic loosely using the old uh, networking analogies here right so that's the dual thing i'm talking about where events and microservices uh, exist together and again analysts such as gartner have also been uh, talking about this that an app 
invokes you through an API gateway. The API then goes into an event broker, or if it is a series of uh, or a network of event brokers, it could be an event mesh, hybrid, multi-cloud, and the microservices are all subscribing. Some of them are also publishing back, and this communication is faster. It's guaranteed, assured, in parallel, and distributed. So what we are seeing here, if I go back to the transformation examples, we are seeing a typical SOA architecture, or to an extent, an API architecture, but an SOA architecture being flipped on its head, such that what used to be the messaging components within an ESB are now being used for event choreography. Your API gateways are still the, the security, the entry point, you have the portal into uh, your microservices functionality, but you don't have an orchestrating ESB anymore because your microservices are smart enough to subscribe to these events. And let's, let's see how this flip actually looks like, right? And we are going to use what you see color coded here are topic taxonomies. And we are going to use just an uh, example of payments using QR code payments. Event, let's define an event. It's basically, again, uh, very similar to how typical uh, interaction or interface definitions are. It's it's some payload, it's a, it's a packet with some payload, which has either a REST URL describing it or a topic. And these topics could be JMS, MQTT, AMQP, pick your favorite standard, best to pick standards, pick your favorite standard, and this has been around for many, many years, right? Tipco RV uh, was doing this in capital markets for 20 years. Uh, now it's all multicast, so uh, it doesn't really uh, find common uh, mention these days. But uh, uh, this is where Solace comes in. We provide that event broker, that event mesh that understands these topics such that you can publish on a topic, which is nothing different from a slash separated string or a REST URL, could be REST, and you can consume using various wildcard. So filtering by the event broker, that's what uh, happens. So using these concepts further. So let's say you have this event mesh. And why event mesh? Because it's a network of event brokers, a message broker, a simple Solace standard edition broker is free for production use pretty much open source like business models. You can run it as a Docker image on your machine or wherever you want, any public cloud on Kubernetes and do publish to subscribe, all this event choreography, all the good things through it. And you can network them in a hybrid multi-cloud setup as an event mesh, right? So basically it doesn't matter where the publisher is, doesn't matter where the subscriber is, it's a distributed integration uh, solution, right? So let's say, going back to my payment example, my payment micro gateway, uh, payment uh, gateway microservice is now subscribing to all payments that were initiated. It doesn't matter what uh, currency, it doesn't matter what location, doesn't matter uh, what payment channel. I'm wildcarding all of that. As long as the version is version one, version one is all I'm interested in. I put a star instead of country, it could be a Singapore payment, could be a, a US payment, could be an Australian payment give it to me and I'm also wildcarding through the greater than everything after version one because that's what my payment gateway could handle, right? So when I have an API invocation, it just goes to that microservice. Very loosely coupled, no ESB, no API saying call here, call there. You publish an event, you put a taxonomy, a topic to it, and it's just rooted because this guy is listening, the event broker pushes the event. And similarly, I could have a B2B channel publishing this over AMQP and not REST because after all, it's a slash separated string. It'll match again, okay? So my east-west traffic is flowing over event choreography, right? My north-south invocation is still API. So let's look at the agility. So what if I wanted to add a new QR code payment only campaign? just to see how my QR code uh, transactions are doing. Now I'm subscribing using, again, my taxonomy is fixed. You can make this whatever you want. Uh, I'm making uh, this microservice subscribe to, again, I don't care about the type of payment. It could be in it, it could be valid, invalid, process settled. 
anything, right? I'm all I'm interested in anything with QR code. Everything else I've wildcarded. Which bank, which type of account doesn't matter, right? So created this microservice could be on the same uh, data center, could be in another cloud, doesn't matter, right? Just bring in, start listening, off you go, right? So that's how you get agility. And this would also have guaranteed delivery and deferred execution. So if this guy is down, the mesh will store all the events so that when he comes back, the events are played or even replayed back to him, right? So if this guy is slow, it does not affect your payment processing uh, path, right? So you can see uh, how we can actually have an API platform, secure the whole thing, and you would want legacy applications to be interfaced with, interacted with as well. And this is where you'll have your ESBs, your adapters, your mainframe, your SAP connectivity, and it's a journey because your newer functionality you could have put as microservices, let's say in the public cloud or your private cloud and Kubernetes. This is your older uh, on-premise legacy systems. You integrate with them through, again, uh, JMS as a standard or HTTP post as a standard. And then over time, you also modernize these components into their own uh, microservices and your end state architecture starts to become uh, that dual, uh, the duality that we were talking about, APIs as an ingestion, as an interaction, and events on the inside uh, from an event streaming perspective. Okay, so pretty heavy, and let's uh, let's compare this with some of the other patterns that we see around uh, service mesh being a very popular one, a very good pattern these days, uh, and uh, leveraging the concepts of proxies. So. If, if I go back to the microservices uh, again, the UI was interacting with these microservices and they were also sometimes interacting with each other and they were happy, they have happily coupled, right? But we as architects, as infrastructure managers, operations managers had a problem with it. So we didn't like these microservices to be coupled. So we decided to decouple them, right? For good reason. And that's where you have the, the service mesh concepts where you put a sidecar next to the microservice. API gateways also do this in a way and this whole space is emerging and evolving, but uh, the whole Istio and Envoy concepts uh, where you have service mesh decouple. So the decoupling problem was solved through service mesh. But again, what is not solved through this pattern is this still couples your microservices serially and synchronously. So what if you wanted async uh, capability? What if my data lake could have got the data later? It doesn't have to be in line, right? So is there a way for us to do a store and forward, a parallel communication, uh, non-inline communication? Uh, it's required for building responsive burst-enabled uh, applications. So service mesh gets us halfway there, but then you need the event broker and the event mesh for your async data path. And every every flow will have it. Like uh, every flow has logging. There is no reason for you to do logging inline, right? Always do it uh, offline because it's just going to slow things down, but you don't want to lose anything, right? So whether it's logging, loyalty, audit, all of those kind of use case, uh, kind of requirements are best done asynchronously. So your end state architecture uh, from an infrastructure, integration infrastructure perspective looks somewhat like this. Service mesh and event mesh and your microservices could be request reply, could be hybrid or could be event driven, right? So, but then while we were doing all of these patterns and we were exploring this duality between events and microservices, there is this conspiracy happening inside uh, Schrodinger's uh, box. So the cat is planning revenge. So what is going on inside this uh, Schrodinger's box? And again, uh, for, for those of you who are not familiar with it, uh, just check Schrodinger's cat out, right? So let's talk about event portal as a way to manage, to govern, to visualize these events, right? So Solace provides event brokers, we provide event mesh, and to manage all of this, 
we provide this multi-broker portal called the event portal, which can go and inspect your event brokers, it can inspect the event mesh and reverse engineer catalog. You can also forward engineer designs uh, that how can you have various microservices interact with each other? What would be the events that would be published and subscribe among them? What's the catalog? What's the metrics of all of these events, right? So it can actually see what this, uh, uh, what is going on in that uh, opaque uh, cube called the mesh, right? So how this actually works is, let's say if you had an enterprise like this, Let's say you're a consumer products goods company and you have a very hybrid cloud, SAP oriented mesh. Some of it is running in GCP, some in Azure, some in AWS. And these event brokers are connecting your retail stores to factories, to track and trace devices, to everything. You may have API gateways fronting some of these services. You may have IoT devices publishing events such as uh, uh, machine data, et cetera that you're correlating with the uh, product lifecycle management data or uh, order data or uh, uh, production orders going from SAP to factories. The event portal is that probe, is that uh, both forward and reverse engineering mechanism to look into these various brokers and it can give you this catalog. It can give you these design flows of uh, who's publishing and who's subscribing and it can also give you these uh, discovery sunburst charts so that uh, you know whether you are seeing more track and trace data or more order data or more patent, uh, more uh, payment data, et cetera, right? So that's the comparative sunburst chart, right? So end-to-end -end communication and then the control plane, the management here on top as well, right? And what is very interesting is, again, we've been innovating in this space for a while that uh, this event portal today can't just talk to uh, Solace brokers. It's also going to be talking to Kafka. So again, you may have Kafka as the edge of the mesh for big data interactions. And you can see, if you compare a broker like Solace with Kafka, Kafka doesn't support that wildcard routing that we talked about or uh, sequencing uh, only happens within a partition. But it's great for uh, log shipping or uh, sending information into data lakes for analytics. So in, in that world where you, you pick the best tool for the best job, the portal basically visualizes in a multi-broker manner. Okay, So various objects, so your microservices are drawn there. It, it's schema where you can have your events, which again, what we talked about, the topics and uh, uh, the schemas associated with them and your uh, applications. So these are where your microservices or your flows are. Multiple applications live in an application domain, right? So that's how you would uh, create. And uh, if I go back to my payments example, this is how the choreography of the microservices would look like, right? So you have the QR code scanner, the payment engine, uh, the QR code scanner is publishing a new QR payment event. So that's an event. Who's subscribing to it? The payment engine. The payment engine can emit two kinds of events. Uh, one is a local payment. One is a foreign payment. Foreign payment goes to an FX calculator. So all you do is you create your microservice. You design what it consumes, what it produces. And these graphs are automatically rendered for you for your change management, for your visualization. And similarly, a catalog is rendered for you. Right. So uh, another view of what the catalog looks like, uh, which you saw in the previous slide. So here are all my events. So tomorrow, if a new service comes in and says, I want to see all shipment actual events, it can go and search and find all of these events and uh, uh, whatever it matches, it can just say, I'll write a microservice which will consume these two events and publish this event. Okay, and we can visualize it as well uh, by event topics. So putting it all together, this is how your stack could look like if you're having an event streaming foundation. You have the API management fronting uh, capabilities, fronting all of these uh, event-driven microservices. You have the event mesh moving data for these microservices as event streams. You may have components like SAP Enterprise Messaging or Kafka as the edge of the mesh. 
and the portal to manage it. So just ending, who's Solus? We are a Canadian company. We've been doing these things, event-driven architectures for many, many years. And we've got customers, pretty good ones. You can have our brokers downloaded from solace.dev. It's free, free for production, 10,000 messages per second. Optionally, you can buy support if you like. That's how we make our money. And it's available in all of these form factors, Docker, Kubernetes, VM, and SaaS services. Right. So takeaways, uh, APIs and events, there is value in duality. Service mesh and event mesh, again, duality exists together, better together. Uh, event portal helps you visualize your entire event-driven patterns, and this gets you to responsive event-driven applications. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks, Sumit. Okay, so um, maybe I quickly try to uh, consolidate some questions from the from the audience. So just two, uh, but uh, let let's see whether we can uh, answer it quickly. So um, some people is asking, can you explain quickly on uh, when to use the async or synchronous uh, uh, messages uh, from the event driven uh, path picture, or yeah. and and also uh, what if the producer also uh, return data? Yeah, so uh, great question. And again, think of it. Uh, I'll be very brief, conscious of time. We can have a detailed conversation later. But uh, if you look at your business flow, uh, let's say you're booking an airline's ticket. What are the steps that need to happen for the booking to go through, right? So the seat availability has to be there. The flight availability, the flight has to be going on. Those steps are sync, right? Your miles, your meals, your loyalty, all of those systems can be async. So your microservices, which are dealing with your business processes, which do not need to be in line, should be async, right? And that is where deferred execution and eventual consistency come in. So in a telco, if you're, let's say, prepaid subscribers, you're topping up money in your phone, the moment the telco validates that, yeah, I've got your order, your provisioning of data and minutes and voice and Netflix, all of that, they can be done in parallel asynchronously and then you can send a notification back to the client application saying that, okay, done, here's a callback. And that's an async API pushed, which again, from a Solace perspective, we support that standard called async API. Uh, there's another talk which is going to explore that in much more detail later, but mm. that's what the pattern is. Okay, so thank you. So I can still add the question, but uh, maybe, maybe Sumit, you can also drop your uh, personal contact in the chat room, and then people can actually reach you offline. So thanks for your time. Okay, thank you, Sumit. Okay. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Thanks, Patrick. Thanks everybody okay. for listening in.